Welcome to HSC TV's Weekly Roundup, I'm Josefina Bergsten. This week, HSC TV can reveal this year's laureates for the 2015 Wright Livelihood Award. Last year, the award honored two prominent Asian human rights defenders, Pakistani human rights lawyer Asma Jahangir and Asian Human Rights Commission's own Basil Fernando. The 2015 laureates were announced yesterday, October 1st, in a press conference at the Swedish Foreign Office in Stockholm by Executive Director Ole von Uxkull and Chair of the Board, Dr. Monica Griffin. The 2015 Right Livelihood Awards go to one honorary recipient and three laureates who share the cash award. This year's honorary award goes to Tony de Bruyne and the people of the Marshall Islands in recognition of their vision and courage to take legal action against the nuclear powers for failing to honor their disarmament obligations under the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty. Three laureates will share the cash award of three million Swedish crowns. The jury recognizes Sheila Watt Cloutier from Canada for her lifelong work to protect the Inuit of the Arctic and defend their right to maintain their livelihoods and culture, which are acutely threatened by climate change. The jury awards Kasha Jaglin Nabagesera from Uganda for her courage and persistence despite violence and intimidation in working for the right of LGBTI people to a life free from prejudice and persecution. And the jury recognizes Gino Strada from Italy, co-founder of the organization Emergency, for his great humanity and skill in providing outstanding medical and surgical services to the victims of conflict and injustice while fearlessly addressing the causes of war. This year's Right Livelihood Award laureates stand up for our basic rights, be it the rights of indigenous peoples or LGBTI communities, or the right of all citizens to live in a world free from the scourges of war and climate chaos. With their tireless work on the front lines and in courts, the laureates uphold the values that led to the creation of the United Nations 70 years ago. AHSC TV was in Geneva during the jury deliberations last week and asked some jury members how they reached their final decision to award these particular laureates in 2015. The laureates this year stand up for our basic rights, the rights of minorities like indigenous peoples or lesbian and gay people, but also the rights of us all citizens to live in a world free from war and from climate chaos. And the laureates, what is special about them, they work both on the front lines of global crises but they also use the legal system, the international and national legal systems, to defend and to protect these rights. So they really provide very concrete answers to the defining challenges of our time, like war and climate change and discrimination. And they do this at a time of humanitarian crisis in the world when the international community doesn't seem to be able to provide solutions, really. So 70 years after the founding of the United Nations, this year's awards really are a, a wake-up call, a call to action, because the laureates prove that we can solve our global problems if our governments wanted to. The world is facing immense challenges in climate, in human dignity, and this year the Right Livelihood Award is I'm dealing with these very urgent issues. We have remarkable people who are prepared to challenge the whole issue of nuclear proliferation, challenging issues relating to climate, challenging issues with regard to human dignity in terms of human rights, and most importantly also the whole refugee problem and war victims because we are moving into a period, period of great war and refugees as never before. I think the unifying theme is human rights, uh, the right to people, the right of people to live uh, insecurity and free from the kind of really existential fears that are increasing in the world at the moment. Uh, war, uh, climate change, uh, the most basic violation of personal rights. Um, these are the subjects that bring them together. They've obviously all campaigned uh, in very different ways, uh, for very different, uh, in very different contexts and indeed for very different causes. But um, I think the uh, assertion of rights uh, through legal processes and otherwise 
uh, is very much one of the common themes that brings them together. All of our laureates this year fight very, very hard to liberate us from fear, from the fear of nuclear threat, the fear of no climate change, the fear of individual discrimination, and the fear of war, injury, and pain. And they all have one thing in common. They all stick to the principles of the law. They use legal instruments to fight for better condition on this planet. Climate change threatens everything humanity has achieved and still hopes to achieve. It also increases security threats, including from nuclear weapons in an increasingly unstable world. Therefore, two of our recipients this year are focusing on countering this threat. Tony de Broom, the Foreign Minister of the Marshall Islands in the Pacific, has pioneered the lawsuit against nuclear weapon states for not fulfilling their obligations to disarm. He is also very active on countering the, the climate threat. His island nation is, of course, exceptionally threatened by uh, a, a warming planet. Uh, Sheila watt Clotier is a member of the Inuit nation in the Arctic, again uh, facing the increasing danger from um, exploitation in the Arctic made possible by global warming. So, you know, here we have a, a double danger, um, global warming uh, making it possible to exploit resources, mineral resources, fossil fuel resources, which will further increase this global warming threat. So this is why we see the combination of these two recipients especially appropriate now that the Paris climate talks are coming. Our African laureate this year is Kasha Jacqueline Nabagazera, a human rights activist in Uganda who's working tirelessly and under huge uh, personal risk for uh, equality of the LGBT community and fighting discrimination and threats. Uh, she's working under tremendous personal threat and she's sticking to legal uh, instruments. She's using the right of law um, to make things or to make the situation for this group better, not only in Uganda, but all over Africa and the world. Happy Pride! It's really a great honor to be here in this historical month. You have the leadership in Obama. I did not have that leadership at home. You have a lot of laws that protect you here, but there's a lot of work that needs to be done. And it gives me more hope that one day in my country, I will be able to walk on the streets of Kampala without fear. This extraordinary process has brought us a great deal of satisfaction. I particularly want to talk about Gino Strada, uh, who is the founder and very, very active part of Emergency. And the reason I want to do this and why I feel it's so significant that on the 20th of September, right before the 21st of September, which is International Peace Day in Geneva, the international humanitarian and human rights capital of the world, that we chose this man not simply because his organization is out there in every war zone and has been really literally performing the surgeries, the life-saving surgeries, which are normally impossible in these war zones on the victims of war. But he has been a voice for decency, saying end the wars that cause the emergencies. His clear message is we don't want to, we don't need the emergencies. And the courage he's had to take up this issue with uh, the warring parties and to say this. Also, having worked myself primarily in many of the conflicts areas where he is working, to see that what he has done, which humanita large humanitarian agencies often don't have the capacity to do, which is working with the local population, building up national capacity so that as soon as possible they can hand over and it's the local people in Afghanistan, in Iraq, etc., who can run their own facilities and they've received that training, that support, that solidarity. At this time when Europe is finally facing a tiny part of the refugee crisis that has overwhelmed the Middle East uh, since especially the Syrian war and wondering how to cope. This message of solidarity is so important for us out there in the countries where the wars are happening and here when the refugees in despair start coming here hoping for, for solidarity and that's what Gino Strada is doing in the war zones and right here in Europe and Italy. The Salam Center is the only facility, high standard in Africa, where free cardiac surgery is provided to everybody. This is an example of what a hospital should be, a no-profit institution. 
the right to receive uh, proper health care is a universal right. Emergency started because there were so many ongoing conflicts, so many civilian victims, and all this happened in countries where medical or surgical facilities were virtually non-existent. The awards will be presented at a ceremony in Stockholm on November 30th in the Swedish Parliament. That is all for this weekly roundup. For more on these and other issues, please visit humanrights.asia or rightlivelihood.org. Thank you for watching and see you again next week.